What if your Tesla could open your gate, prep your car porch, and remind you to charge? Hi, Mike here. I'm back to my car today. While charging the Tesla, I'm going to show you in this video five automation ideas to make your Tesla and home smarter. There's already quite a number of videos on YouTube showing how to integrate Tesla with Home Assistant. Today, I'm going to show you how to integrate with Homey Pro instead. Okay, so let's get into it. The first step of the integration, you need to go to developer.tesla.com. This is the place where you sign up for API key using your Tesla account. Um, just for information, uh, this API is actually chargeable, but for every sign up, you can get a $10 discount, uh, which usually we will not exceed. Uh, you can also set a billing limit that it doesn't cost you any anything at all, right? So uh, you can just use this to roughly estimate how many uh, API calls that you can make per month. So uh, don't worry, I think so far I have not exceeded any API calls uh, with the integration yet. So what we need to do is go and log in. Right, so over here we need to log in with our own Tesla account. For security sake, of course, I mask all of this out. And it also requires me to uh, enter my Google authentication, two factor authentication. Okay, right now, once we're logged in, you will see that there is a a pre-created one just for testing but for the purpose of demonstration we click on create new application over here we just key in uh, smart home uh, integration personal usage <coughs> Okay, so in this page, we need to create two original URL and one redirect URI. Okay, um, I will show you, you can pause here and just see what, and just copy what I've keyed in. Yeah, so basically these are the three uh, fields that you need to key in. Uh, leave it to authorization code machine to machine. Um, go to next. Okay. Over here, we are defining what uh, information that we allow the, the fleet API to access. So basically, we will allow all this except for the energy product and, and energy products because we are just uh, doing it for the vehicle. Uh, you can skip the building because we are going to stick to the free tier. <laughs> so once you have created the uh, API key, this is the one that I just recently just created. And this was the one I have created earlier just for some testing. Um, in this example, we will go to view details. And this is the client ID and client secret, right? For the security purpose, I have masked them out. So, but you will need to copy these two information to Homey when you're setting up the integration. Let's go back to my pre-created ones. Over here, if I go to application usage, yes, this is where you will see Oh, these are the number of requests that my vehicle has, my homie has requested from the Tesla Fleet API, right? So generally, okay, I went for holiday within this period, so there's an, not much any API calls, but 
this is when I was testing and doing the homing flows. Uh, this is when I come back from the holiday. And over here, you will see a spike. Uh, I noticed there will always be a spike when you charge your vehicle. Yeah. So, but this is still within the free API tier. The next step to add the whole Tesla into your homey, you need to go to my.homey.app. This is the web interface of uh, homey. Of course, you can also do it in the uh, mobile application. Uh, previously, I've already added the vehicle, but just for sake of demonstration, let's go to plus, click new device, search for test Tesla. And you would notice that uh, in the App Store, there's already quite a number of Tesla integration. Uh, the one, the one that we are interested in is this Tesla. So, uh, what you need to add is car, uh, local and navigation, location and navigation, as well as battery and charging. So when you click on this, you will just click on connect. Okay. So in this part, they also have some instruction on how to, uh, create the Tesla API free a API. And this information we have previously keyed in, so we have to ignore that. You have to copy and paste the client ID and client secret into this and click on next. The interface will request for your permission. You will open uh, another browser for you to log into your Tesla account, which will uh, show you the list of uh, permissions that you need to grant. Uh, yes, I need to select all. And then there you go. Your Tesla has been added to Homey. So before I go on to the next step, I'm going to move them into the right room. Okay. So up to now is for you to uh, retrieve data from the API. Uh, the, this is the screenshot that I recorded in the car where I need to uh, request for permission and register as a car key. Uh, why do I need to register as a car key? Because if you want to control your front, control your AC, control your doors, you need to set this permission right inside the car where your, your mobile phone is in the vehicle. So once this step has been done, you are good to go. So now let's go back to Homey. I've added three icons. One is the vehicle itself, the battery and the location. I've named my vehicle Chao Ji Bai, which means super white because it has a white interior and a white exterior. Let me know in your comments what kind of name you have named your Tesla. So let's go into the vehicle itself, right? Over here, you can wake up the vehicle, activate sentry mode, or open a trunk or frunk. Um, then you can see things like uh, when I shifted to park, what's the current speed? So all these are being pulled uh, to the Tesla API, right? Uh, under battery, you will see the various status of the charge, the charge status, uh, the, even the charging cable and under location, you will see things like the, the location, a distance from home, uh, all this will make the integration very powerful because now you can use information such as distance from home, the status of your charge port, the status of your gear to make powerful automations for your smart home. Based on the tests I've done so far, I noticed that the Homey Tesla integration works by polling every minute. Uh, of course, this is the default poll duration. You can shorten it, but it will use up more of your API calls, which may end, land you into the pit tier. So now before I show you the five automation ideas, consider like and subscribe to give me more motivation to do video like this. Now, the first automation idea is something that my clients have been asking. How do I make sure that my auto gate opens when I'm driving home my Tesla? And as a bonus, when I park my Tesla in the uh, car porch, how do we make sure that the gate gets closed automatically? In this example, I'm using my client's gate and his doorbell device. 
For our landed clients, uh, most of the time we use Dolbert to control his auto gate and side gate, and then we integrate to homing. How do I make all this work together? Um, I've placed the car porch light, the Dolbert, and three Tesla icons in the, the car porch room. Uh, so this is the flow. Let me go to Tesla and let's take a look at this particular flow. So what we want to do is that when the, the Tesla is less than hun less than 100 meters from home, then we open the car porch via the doorbell. Whereas the doorbell will open a relay, trigger a relay that opens the auto gate. And then it will trigger a flow that is uh, that's called porch light approaching. What does this porch light approaching do? Uh, if I click on this porch light approaching, it's doing uh, action to turn on the car porch and then turn it off after 15 minutes. And this only happens at night between 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Right. So in summary, this particular flow will turn on the open the Re open auto gate as well as turn on the light if the time is between uh, 6 p.m. to 6 uh, a.m. Once the car has been parked, right? So you look at this particular condition when the shift state change and the shift state is parked. Uh, please note that this is not an immediate action because remember I said that the uh, API is on a polling basis. So it will only activate one minute plus after you have shift to park. So it's more of a, a kind of a habit that you want to uh, consider uh, to when you are designing this flow. Because sometimes you may feel, oh, I, I once the car has shift to park, I want it to be immediate. But because of the polling state, polling mechanism, uh, it doesn't happen like that. Uh, the second thing to take note is you have to make sure that there's another condition to check that the vehicle is at home location, right? Uh, if you never set it, set this particular condition, if you're outside and you park the car, your auto gates open. You will start calling me and say, hey, how come my auto gates is opening by itself? <laughs> so without realizing this is the condition that is very important to make sure this thing work uh, flawlessly. The idea behind the second automation idea is that you want your auto gate to open, say in the morning when you reach to your car and you unplug the charge port. Uh, once the Omi has detected that you unplug your charge port, the auto gate opens for you to drive off. And once you have driven a certain distance away from home, the Tesla will inform Homey to close the gate for you. So going back to Homey again, um, this is the flow. This is how we achieve that. Uh, once the charging port has been closed, and again, remember to put this because you don't want to be ending up charging in a supercharger somewhere else in a, in, in a shopping mall and then your auto gate op opens again. So uh, in this case, case you just make sure that uh, this is in place so that uh, once your charge port is closed and you're at home it will open the relay for you then to close your gate automatically is to use this condition when the distance from home change and it is greater than 0 0.1 kilometer which is 100 meter then once again we trigger the relay notice that we are just triggering the relay every time. How do we know that it's open and closing? Uh, right now, I'm just assuming every trigger is just like a toggle. The first time you trigger, it open. The second time you trigger, it close. But of course, you can use a door sensor on your gate to make sure that it's open and closed before doing this trigger. Because uh, technically, Dolbert doesn't know whether your gate is open or closed. You will just toggle between open and close every time you trigger it. Now, wouldn't it be nice if your Tesla can send you an audio notification when your battery is low? Your Model 3 battery level is 41%. Please remember to charge. So here's how you do it. Under this Remind Low Battery Flow, 
what I've said is uh, when the time is uh, 9.30 p.m. and with my battery level is less than 20%, and especially this again, right? Make sure that it is at home. If not, you'll be also be quite weird if you're outside and it's just announcing to no one. Uh, so it will send a text to speech message to my uh, Google speaker, Google, Google home speaker that uh, to say that my battery is level is a particular percent and please remember to charge. The fourth idea is suitable for everyone who stays, especially in an apartment or we, when they use a public charger. So uh, you would want your Tesla to remind you to unplug with an audio notification to your Google speaker so that you don't get uh, things like idling feeds if you are hogging the uh, charging lock. Charging has stopped. Battery level is currently 88%. Please shift your vehicle within 15 minutes to avoid idling fees. So now this is the last flow that I'm, show, I'm showing you. Uh, basically when the charging has stopped and the time is between 10 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. This is a typical time where the public charger will start to uh, enforce idling fees. Uh, if you have completed charging and but you are still hogging the lot and once again remember this uh, in my case i set a visual notification as well as a audio notification and then i turn out the visual notification again so uh, you can see that this flow is a bit longer but uh, it's basically because it involves another light Okay, the final thing I want to share is uh, if once you're integrated Homey with your Tesla, you can create flows like this, right? Uh, to activate your frunk or trunk through Homey. Uh, once I created these two flows and when I add into my favorite flow here, uh, then I can use my Google Assistant, uh, be it through my Pixel Watch or through my Pixel Phone to open the trunk or open the frunk. Uh, the beauty about Homey is you can also integrate it through HomeKit, right? Through the HomeKit controller. Uh, this is also a flow starter where you can actually say, hey Siri, uh, open trunk or hey Siri, open frunk when your hands are full. And that's how I've made my Tesla and smart home work together to make life just a little bit cooler and lazier. If you found any of this automation useful, give the video a like, drop your questions or idea in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more smart home and EV goodness. Till next time, Mike signing out.